Uh, in this video we'll show you how we can uh, do the machining on this uh, uh, step file that uh, we sent through. Okay, so uh, I've imported the step file into PM3D, which is our import uh, facility. So in here what we'll do is we need to go into the CAD system so that we can add some extra elements onto the shape, uh, namely the radius. Uh, at the edges here. So if I go to select all or export all faces, take it into the CAD system, I'll set my zero point to be the center of the part, uh, and we can export in millimeters or inches. Uh, okay, so we go into that and give this drawing a name. So that uh, creates the drawing. And if I want to launch the Partmaster CAD, I do that now. Okay, so this is the uh, the shape that's come through. Now, because we export just flat faces, what it's done to the top edge, as you can see, is that it hasn't put a line uh, here because it's only exported the face which it finds, which is the flat face. Uh, now when you come into the CAD system, everything is created as contours which you can then machine. But because we need to do some work on this, I need to explode the contours back into their base elements. And to do that I use the curve button here, curve and extract. Now what this does is it breaks down the contours into line and arc segments. Okay, so that's that one and there's probably one over here as well. Okay. That's good. So what I need to do is I need to draw an arc here. Now I don't know the size of it, but that doesn't matter because I can just use the dimension facility just to check what size it is. Okay, so that's the size. So I can now draw an arc between those two points because I know the size of it. So I choose arc and I want a two point tangent which is the minor part of the arc and the radius I'll set to 96.6. Okay, so I'm in near snap mode, so I hold down the shift key to identify these points, because otherwise it will want to put it tangent to things. So I go from that point to that point. So that's just created uh, a small arc there for me. Uh, now I can um, uh, create contours of these two shapes. What I need is a contour which represents the top part of the radius for the inside cavity, and also a contour for the top part of the outside shape. I'll leave the outside contour as it is because that can be my boundary which I'll use to uh, machine the outside of the shape. Okay, so creating contours, going to contour mode here, and I'll do the outside one first, start off at that bottom position there, and just make it a thicker line thickness. I'm not worried about the depth because the depth that it gets machined will be controlled by the radius which I'll create in a moment. Okay, so it finds its way around to this position here and it can either follow the arc I've just created or it could go back on itself here. So we want to follow this arc and then when it gets to the end of that I want it to follow this arc here. So that creates that shape there. So I've drawn it in a nice thick line type so you can see it. Now I do the same thing for this other uh, uh, shape here again it gets to that position and wants me to indicate where I want it to follow. Okay so I've got the two contours created there. Now what I need to do is just uh, draw an arc. Uh, so I think the radius is about 3mm uh, so the easiest thing is just to set up a grid of 3mm. And then I can simply uh, dark layer so I can just simply uh, draw an arc onto a grid and it doesn't really matter anywhere that anywhere that I draw this. Okay so now I need to create what we call a profile so this is something which is going to be happening in the z-axis. So I choose NC but this time I choose profile. I want to start from the top and then go down to the bottom. So that's that and it needs an end point which is just there. Okay so that's done all of that. So if I save that away and then take that through into machining. 
to have my tool change position. Okay, so those are the uh, shapes that we've got. So we probably want to define some tools. So uh, we choose the bottom toolbar here, and I want to define a tool, which will be a ball nose tool, and give it a diameter, a length, and a cut depth. But the cut depth on this is not really um, uh, a problem because the cut depth will be uh, specified by the radius that it's going to put on top of the contours, and you'll see that in a second. Okay, so we do uh, do a tool change. This is where we set the spindle speed and the feed rate. And if we want the coolant to be switched on, that's where we do it. So that's the tool at its home position. Now I need to do what what we call the go round command, which is a basic contouring. So we choose the contour that we want to machine. If I know the name of it, I can choose it from the list. But it's easier just to choose it from the screen. So I want to machine that one. Now as I hover the mouse over it, you can see the direction of the contour, so I want to offset that to the left. Just for now I'll switch off the approach and run off because I don't want those. And what's happening in the z-axis tab is that I want to associate with that contour that profile which I created. The tolerance is a method of setting the uh, coarseness or fineness of the cut. Okay, so what that does, if I put it into ISO mode, is that it follows the contour and associates with it the z-axis profile, which is that uh, small arc which I created. If I look at that from the front view, you can see the number of cuts that it's got on there. Now that's controlled by the arc tolerance. So if I go back and change that to a smaller number, you'll see that we have much finer cuts there. So that's how we can control the coarseness and the number of cuts around there. So depending on how accurate you need this, you might need to change that to a small number. Okay, so that's done the outside shape. Okay, now I need to do the same thing on the inside. So I go back to plan view. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut and paste the, or copy and paste this command here and just get it to work on a different contour. So I highlight it, right click and say copy, and then right click and say paste. So I've got two commands there. Now I just need to change this one, double click it, and make it to work on this contour. And this time I'm going to offset the tool to the right. Okay, so we simulate that. Uh, now we can do the outside, so we might need a different tool for that. So let's just have a straightforward end mail. Uh, set up the length. Select that tool for use. Set the spindle speed and the feed rate. And again we're going to do a simple go round command on the outside shape there. Uh, now it's picked up the depth from the model, so I want to change my work surface to zero, which is going to be the top of the job and the depth of the contour is 12.7. Offset to the left, and again, I'll just switch off the approach and run off. Okay. So, now we can look at that in as many views as we need to, and then we simulate it for a standard vertical mill. This part of the simulator allows us to set up any stock that we want. So if we can, if we need to put in stock from uh, a particular size, we can put it in here. But in most cases, the stock comes from the extent of the machining toolpath. So we simply uh, click simulate. <coughs> and then here we can either see just the material and the tool or we can see the complete machine tool. So depending on how we want to do that, we've got the option. When we see the complete machine tool, we can also switch off the machine housing so that we can see more clearly what's happening. So if we hide the housing, but we've still got the bones of the machine so we can see what it's doing. Uh, simple um, play commands at the top here. speeds up or slows down the simulation.
position. Rolling in the mouse, or we'll zoom in. Now, on this shape, we drew a simple arc to represent the roll on the top of the job, but the z-axis profiling will work with any shape. It doesn't need to be just a single entity, it could be a series of line and arc segments. So if you had tapered sides on this, <coughs> then you would draw the arc at the top and an angle which represented the tapered side. When the simulation is finished, it will enhance it and give us a better view. It's called adding a refine to the graphic, but it doesn't do it whilst the tool is on the screen, it just does it at the end. And depending on the part and depending on the size of the component, we can set up the coarseness factor for the accuracy of the model as well, so that we can see a much finer view. And here comes the finishing tool. Okay, so that's the part. If we wanted to, we could face off the top of the job as well, but that might not be necessary. Okay, so uh, the last thing close down the simulator back into the CAM system and then post-process for your particular machine tool. So if you have uh, whatever machine tool you've got, we'll have a post-processor for it. And then when you post-process, it opens up another window at the bottom here, and then that just gives you the G-codes for your machine. So that's how we do it.
Uh, in this video we'll show you how we can uh, do the machining 